I have retested the U7 Pro Max very recently and I was upset by the slow progress that Ubiquiti made towards the development of the multilink operation. But they did recently release a beta firmware that supports it and I also managed to finally make it work on the client's end. So I had to run some tests on the U7 Pro. The U7 Pro Max multilink operation test results should be available shortly after. Also, I have already run some tests on the Zyxion WA-130BE, which was much quicker than the Ubiquiti Wi-Fi 7 access points to unlock this cool feature, so check it out as well. If you haven't watched that video, know that I relied on the Qualcomm Fast Connect 7800 adapter from MSI, but I did have to run an unofficial driver update since, despite claiming the support for Mutrik operation from the get-go, MSI did not really enable it. Or so it seemed. Anyway, it needed a special driver. Under Understand that the adapter may perform spotty at times and it may even require computer reboots from time to time, but it's more stable than I expected nevertheless. I used Windows 11 with the experimental update 24H2, but know that the Linux version 6.11 is now fully released and should support multilink operation as well. And to power up the access point I relied on the Zyxel XS1930 switch which supports PoE++ and does have multiple 10 gigabit Ethernet ports available. So this Despite its age, it's still a beast of a device. Now let's see how easy it is to set up the multilink operation. If you haven't enabled the access to the beta firmware versions, then multilink operation will not be enabled yet. But I managed to get my hands on the latest firmware, which is version 7.1.24, and I could find the multilink operation feature under settings and Wi-Fi. Scroll a bit lower and multilink operation will be there next to the three Wi-Fi bands. Enable it and choose which radio bands will be aggregated. You can go for any combination of two or even all three at the same time. Then from the radios, section you can configure the channel and the channel bandwidth for each radio. Before seeing the results that I got, we need to talk about the Wi-Fi 7 adapters because not all are the same, nor will they perform identically. It seems that the consensus is that the Qualcomm Fast Connect 7800, the one that I'm using, is the best one so far because it uses the MLMR mode so we do get through multi-radio data transfer supporting simultaneous TX by TX and RX by RX over multiple links. At the same time as MediaTek states, the links are statically assigned and cannot switch to other frequencies dynamically, something that the Intel B200 can because it uses the AMLSR mode, an abbreviation from the enhanced multilink single radio. The name gives it away that despite the ability to listen to a couple of links at the same time, we're still dealing with a single radio data transfer. As I said when I tested the Zyxel wa 130 be I think the Qualcomm approach is closer to what multilink operation was initially envisioned, not that the Intel B200 is bad, quite a contrary, apparently being able to provide a higher throughput if certain conditions are met. Now let's see the results. I had to partially retest the U7 Pro for fresh data because the latest firmware updates worked in favor of a better single client throughput both upstream and downstream. We do see a far better throughput at 5 and 30 feet using only the 6 GHz radio and the 320 MHz but even the downgrade to 160 MHz didn't have a heavy impact, especially a long range. That being said, I configured the multilink operation to use the 5 GHz radio band on 160 MHz and the 6 GHz using using the 320 MHz channel bandwidth, and the Windows 11 was able to confirm that the two radio bands were indeed aggregated. And the performance that I saw was interesting, reaching the maximum possible throughput within the 2.5 gigabit limit at 5 feet, and we also see an improvement at 70 feet. When compared to the NWA-130BE, the U7 Pro is better when the signal attenuation went near 80 dB, but the Zyxel access point offered a better throughput at 30 feet. After switching the channel bandwidth to 160 MHz, we see a decline in throughput near the access point, but a slight increase at 70 feet, so the range is a bit better. The NWA-130BE performed much better here. On the next step, I configured multilink operation to aggregate the 6 GHz radio band with the 2.4 GHz radio, the latter using the 40 MHz channel width, while the former remained on the 160 MHz. And when compared to the base performance, there is little improvement. Improvement, only at 70 feet. 
So, I enabled the 320MHz channel bandwidth on the 6GHz radio. This time we do see a slight bump at 5 feet, but the rest showed values lower than the base 6GHz performance. Let's move forward and include all three radio bands under the multilink operation, setting up the 6GHz to use the 320MHz channel with. The biggest surprise comes at 70 feet, where we see a throughput close to 200 megabits per second upstream. Downstream it also did impressively well. After switching the 6 GHz radio to the 160 MHz width, the close range throughput shuts up, and while the signal attenuation has an extra impact on the throughput, it remains impressive nevertheless. Lastly, I aggregated the 2.4 GHz radio band with the 5 GHz one, and while it did well in terms of coverage, the nearby throughput is lacking a bit, especially when compared to the Zyke 7 wa 130 be It felt strange to stop here, especially since I usually focus on latency in pretty much all my reviews, so I decided to give it a try here as well. But I couldn't run NetHydra on the usual 5 client devices. Firstly, because not all are Wi-Fi 7 clients. Secondly, because it would have taken me at least a week of testing for about 8 hours a day. And I don't get paid for this, so I went with a quicker solution. I used the Qualcomm client device and ran Flint, which checks for buffer bloat. And once again I ran it on the 6 GHz radio using the 160 MHz and the 320 MHz channel bandwidth as a reference for future results. I am going to focus on the average latency results, which seem to be better than what I experienced using the Zyxel NWA 130BE. We see the curve staying below 50 milliseconds most of the time using the 320 MHz width, while the 160 MHz shows an average of 50 milliseconds. Does the multilink operation have an impact when set to use the 5 GHz alongside the 6 GHz radio? Yes, and for the better. Using the 160 MHz channel width, we see that the latency stays at around 30 milliseconds for the first half of the test, then a sudden bump up, followed by a drop at about 40 milliseconds. Using the 320 MHz MHz channel width also shows an overall improvement of about 10 milliseconds across the entire test, which should not be taken lightly. Next, I set up the multilink operation to use the 2.4 GHz radio on the 6 GHz radio bands. We can see that there is a very slight increase in latency when using the 160 MHz channel width on the 6 GHz radio, and a more substantial increase when using the 320 MHz width, hovering at an average of 50 milliseconds. Moving forward, I aggregated the three radio bands once again and ran flant. Using the 160 MHz channel bandwidth on the 6 GHz radio, we see a promising start, but then the latency raises close to 75 milliseconds and stays there, which is far from ideal. Using the 320 MHz channel width seems to contain things much better and the performance is more consistent at around 40 or 45 milliseconds. Lastly, I aggregated the 2.4 GHz and the 5 GHz radios, it's a fairly contained performance, the latency averaging 50 milliseconds for the entire duration of the test. That's about all for the multilink operation performance. But do let me know if you want me to run a specific type of test. I do have to mention that I am impressed by how much Ubiquiti has improved the U7 Pro and hopefully the U7 Pro Max as well. But we will see about a specific model very soon. During my tests I did not experience any bugs at the access point level and there were no crashes while running the tests. I did experience some stubbornness from the Wi-Fi 7 adapter side to detect the 6 GHz radio, but it was to be expected considering that I am using an unofficial firmware version. Overall, things look good, so if you have the right hardware, I'd say that the U7 Pro is a far more attractive option right now than it was a few months ago. That's all for now, thank you for watching, and see you next time.